Africa is at a point in time where we need to find solutions that are indigenously ours to problems that we face day to day. This is painfully obvious when you look around because uh, when we ha look at our state of evolution, our state of growth, our level of growth, we find that everything that other continents went through is not exactly the same direction we're going along. So following their pattern to a T does not solve our problems. We're about to take a mind trip to Nigeria. Our topic today is Afrofuturism, and that is recovering and building on an, in an interrupted history. Almost six centuries after colonial rule, Nigeria, we still mentally encounter this in our architecture, where our cities are built to emulate several first world countries, um, making things expensive for the typical Nigerians, forcing them to live in rural areas, which aren't any better as these areas have been put to ridicule by corruption, neglect, leaving the mass population in these areas of the countries to lower income and also causing the youth to move out, the youth population in these areas to move out to bigger cities to get better job, um, job opportunities, um, which is why my thesis lives, um, basically to give uh, a truthfulness to the dream that there's an Afro future in these rural homes. Um, focusing on my site in Abia State, Nigeria, right here, um, which is specifically Amibo Village, which is my home village, the Ezam compound. Um, this area is classified as a tropical zone as it is in the southeastern part of Nigeria. So we get mostly um, rainfall, rainfall most of the months in the year and um, with short dry seasons. If you see this chat right here, it kind of explains um, the rainfall per month. So speaking on the precedents um, of past civilizations that have tried to do this, which I'm trying to do, the Enri Kingdom was an ancient kingdom, um, which you can see that I kind of outlined here. It's an ancient kingdom, which happens to be now Anambra and parts of where my site is located, Abia State, where we are right now. Um, they were a civilization that welcomed escaped slaves to their land, giving them a place to live, an opportunity to join in the, tra the trade of the community, which was a palm trade, which was palm trade and cer ceramic making. Um, they were considered as an upgrade to society because they were cut off by neighboring kingdoms, um, as they were considered to be enemies of progress because they didn't participate in slavery. So now the, the way this community or like Asian Igbo co um, co um, villages were set up, set up by bubbles, um, I'm going to try and zoom into this. That is um, basically in the sense that each family, like either a man and two wives, a man and one wife, as they grow and give birth to children, it grows on um, a horizontal bubble, which ends up being um, a whole village at the end of the day. So it's family, family, connected by an, uh, like, a, like a family OB, and it goes up. And at the end of, at the, end of the day, it becomes a whole village that's connected by a market square. Um, so, it's 2020 and you're here, basically. That's my, um, that's SM compound. This is a collage with SM compound. And um, and in following in following the critical regionalist approach which I followed, I split my priorities according to the provision of affordable housing with on-site building materials, a central point by reintroducing the market square, um, creating a, and also creating an economy for the um, of trade for the village. Um, here's a site plan kind of to get you situated to where we are. Um, this is the ma major highway, this is the entrance to the village. And uh, um, so this is the most recent site plan. This shows the Ezem compound and the market square, which is the Ahir Fuche market, market square that's currently there right now, which is, this is what it looks like right now. Um, after many design tests that I, that I um, under, undertook, I arrived um, at a place in 2029 where the ESM compound has expanded um, due to due to the lim but due to the limit of land space um, or horizontal expansion, the only way to expand, the only possible way to expand is vertical. Um, how do we do this um, with locally sourced materials? Um, by the use of our number one 
building an economical material, which is corrosive palm. I'm going to talk about that quickly. So corrosive palm basically is, um, is a type of palm tree that has grown directly on the site. If you, can, if you can see of the pictures that I showed earlier, we have a lot of palm that grows in the village. And um, my idea is to basically, after these palm trees start to die off and they don't produce enough palm, which we can sell, we, we, break, we, cut down the, we cut down the bark and use the bark as a building material. So before we start to talk about this, look at these photos. What exactly do you see? What I see anyways is gradual process or rather gradual progress. And um, okay, before I, if I go on, now look at these photos. What do I see? Nothing. I see nothing. Why do I say I see nothing? It's because just like the other ones where I said I see, I, I, where I said I see gradual process. In this, I see nothing. And um, some might say, okay, well, you can still see progress in these photos. But then, being an architect, I believe that the only way you can see progress is when there's a process in between. And I have proof to back this up. All right, let's 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 go. Let's let's go and look the meaning of progress. It simply means the development towards an improved or more advanced condition. Yeah. By saying this, ask yourself again: Was there progress in those in the last photos I showed you? No. Okay. This video has taken me a long while to to create simply because this was this this is a stronger topic than needs to be discussed. Um, I've taken my time to figure out how exactly I would want to execute this video. And you know, sometimes there is su there's, there's, there's such a thing as overthinking when making or when creating content. And I've learned that in my however ye many years of being a content creator. But um, so I decided to talk about this, especially since like now um, there's been so much talk about this whole metaverse, um, creating your own reality um virtual reality and i just made it just made me remember my thesis project so this is my thesis project from from my master's program for you guys for you guys that have been following me so the topic is afrofuturism and from the quote that i i started this video on afrofuturism simply means concept to see what exactly um an african future would look like or would have looked like say we were say we skipped the western colonization phase kind of crazy and obviously but um and i know i do not mean wakanda because that was the first thing that a lot of people thought but i don't mean wakanda because even wakanda has some even though wakanda is a good representation of what africa can be in the few uh with if with the influence of colonization but my thesis and my thought was to see if i could pull out the the unwanted influence because regardless of the of the fact we know that africans have been traveling around the world from time even before colonization obviously there was going to be there was bound to be influence from every every country every country has an influence some way or the other but those are chosen influences not the ones that were laid upon us by through religion through um culture through race you know what i mean um, anyways hope you guys enjoyed the video um I know it might still be a little bit confusing, but I wanted to put this video out at least now so that I can start to pique some sort of interest and see what you guys thought about it. So um, obviously, obviously you guys know the new year is coming and a lot of my videos, I want to start making it a little bit more organic. So like a lot more related, related to what you guys actually want to see. So I don't spend my time creating videos that you guys don't actually want to watch. Um, so, um, if you guys want to know more about my project, obviously, and then like, I can go, I can go through my, more of my, my thought process about this topic. And then I'm going to share, I'm, I'm going to put the link to the full, 
like thesis book because I also wrote the book, complete book, and it was it's all published and it's online. I'm gonna put the link in the in the description below. Um, so read it, comment on the video, let me know what you think, and to send you guys off, I'm gonna show you guys a video that I also presented um, when I presented the, the my project. Oh, by the way, the first video you saw of the voiceover was from my presentation my actual presentation footage i recorded it so it's kind of nice it takes me back anyways i'm going to send you guys off with an experience of what my project would look like or could look like um so enjoy comment like subscribe and i'll see you in the next video